is a program about the ongoing geopolitical trends and the panorama of the present-day realities in Central Asia. Politics, economics and culture, events, trends and people, all this on one territory. Hello, you're watching the Central Asian Report in today's program. The big prospects of small business, support of youth entrepreneurship in Kazakhstan. Life on the peak of heights, the daily life of a mountain village in Tajikistan. Exhibition of designer clothing, the fashion trends of Central Asia. And coming right up, the Central Asian News. A fund for social medical insurance to be established in Kazakhstan. Introduction of mandatory social medical insurance in the country will allow to ensure shared responsibility of the government, employers and citizens for their health. In addition, the government expects that as a result of these new measures, the quality and access of medical services will improve. The system will be based on mandatory insurance payments made by the state, working population, employers and self-employed persons. Insurance payments of working individuals will be set at 2% of their income. Administrative structures will see cutbacks in Turkmenistan. This is being done with the aim of improving the management of various sectors of the economy and to optimize public expenditures. According to the country's president, at the moment the human resource base in administrative structures is unjustifiably expanding. This negatively affects the effectiveness of public management. In many countries of the world, the majority of the population is engaged in small and medium business activities. Aside from the social effects, this gives significant economic returns. Precisely smaller enterprises are able to provide 90% of the GDP. For Kazakhstan, which has set an ambitious task for itself to become one of the top 30 developed countries, the support of small and medium business is becoming one of its strategic priorities. What's more, special attention is devoted to the more active part of the population, the youth. An Almaty resident, Bahadir Anarmetov, despite his young years, already has his own business. Last year, the young man participated in the state program Business Roadmap 2020. Within the framework of this program, he received a loan of 17 million tenge. By using these funds, Bahadir opened a dry cleaning business that uses a unique environmentally friendly technology. I found out that dry cleaning is part of a priority zone of economy and that the Damu Fund provides support in the form of a grant and subsidized loans. I applied to the fund and also a bank. I was approved for the loan and thanks to the help of the Damu Fund, I opened up a dry cleaning shop, Eco Dry in Almaty. The story of Bahadur Anarmetov is not due to luck or chance, but is part of a laid-out plan. The thing is, youth entrepreneurship is one of the priority directions of development of Kazakhstan's economy. That is why support to beginning entrepreneurs is offered by numerous state structures and organizations, including the Damo Entrepreneurship Development Fund, the National Agency for Technological Development, and the National Chamber of Entrepreneurs, Atamikian. These institutions provide support along two lines. First is teaching the basics of entrepreneurship, and second is financing the realization of the business projects. Thus, for improving the financial literacy of the young population, all the 188 affiliate offices of the National Chamber of Entrepreneurs at Amiken have a school operating called Bastau. If you want to engage in entrepreneurship, but do not know how, you can come to the school and learn. First, the theoretical background. You'll be taught how to make a business plan. Then some entrepreneurs that already have experience. For example, if you want to build a greenhouse, then experienced entrepreneurs will tell and show you how to do that. Опытные, значит, предприниматели, у которых есть опыт уже работы с теплицами, они вам расскажут и покажут, как это нужно делать. Aside from the school Bastao, the National Chamber of Entrepreneurs at Tamikian, in collaboration with the Damo Entrepreneurship Development Fund, opened up a free of charge service centers for entrepreneurs. Last year, 2,000 people received consultations at the Almaty office of the fund. And during the first half of 2015, already more than 4,000 people. Here you can see for yourself how the consultation process of entrepreneurs takes place for young beginning enterprises and already active ones. Here entrepreneurs can get consultations on tax issues and legal issues. Another instrument of support of youth entrepreneurship in our country is provision of grants without down payment and gratuitous. In particular, the National Agency for Technological Development has a number of large grant programs. However, as a rule, only companies working in the field of innovation can apply for these grants. 
We are against grant financing. Experience show that state grants that have been previously given out, they dim the enthusiasm of the youth. When a grant is given, they know that they do not have to return the money and then spend it imprudently. Aside from grants, there are other financing options. For example, the Dhamma Fund offers a number of instruments for the development of small and medium businesses. One of them is subsidization of the interest rate that entrepreneur plays for the loan to the bank and the fund's guarantee. Young entrepreneurs do not always have collateral as security or property that can guarantee a loan applied for at a bank to 100 percent. Therefore, there is the guarantee of the Damu Fund, where it can provide a security guarantee up to 85 percent of the loan amount. One of the conditions for receiving this support, the enterprise must be engaged in one of the priority sectors of the economy. These include machine building, logistics services, education and a number of others. And this is just a small part of what the government offers for stimulating youth entrepreneurship in the country. Considering such substantial support, Bahadir Anarmetov is not worried about the fate of his business. Already in the near future, he's planning to launch a whole network of dry cleaning shops across Almaty. These people rarely become the heroes of the news. Newspapers do not write about them. They are neither politicians nor show business stars. These are just people from the depth of the country, but the grey daily bustle of their life at times expresses more eloquently what one won't see in the news or read in the newspapers. The joys and difficulties of the residents of a mountain village. This is the next story of our correspondent from Tajikistan. The way from Dushanbe to Yagnova is more of an adventure back into the past. Local residents live right on the peaks of the mountains, at the altitude of two to 3,000 meters. There are no means for communication here, no schools, hospitals, or paved roads. We're happy here and do not wish to move. We live the way our ancestors did. The majority of the residents of Yagnobo are the direct descendants of the residents of the ancient Sogdia. According to historians, it is precisely here that at some point in time, the residents of Sogdia hid from the invasions of the foreigners the troops of Alexander Makedonsky and the hordes of Chinggis Khan. Early morning, the time when just as the sun rises, life is already bustling. The men take the herds of animals to the mountain hills, women bake flatbreads and milk the cows. Out of this milk, butter is made, manually, just like in the old times. My mother, grandmother and great-grandmother made butter this way. I whip up the milk like this for half an hour and then scoop up the butter. From what is left, I make the traditional chaka and kurt. The thick milk mass is hanged out in bags. As the water drips out, small balloons are made. The preparation process takes place on the roof of the house. These round forms need to dry up under the hot sun and then they can be eaten all year round and added to traditional dishes. Today, my damo is torn between the kitchen, garden, and the room where his sick son is lying. Recently, he went to see about a doctor. The only medic is a recent graduate and lives 20 kilometers away. He said the diagnosis, brucellosis, and gave medications. But the doctor cannot stay to monitor the child. If his condition worsens, he will have to be taken to the hospital. And this is another 60 kilometers to the next district. The father of the family tries to help in any way that he can. to make sure that there's hot water, that the children are kept warm and sick less. I made this type of thermos out of a pipe, and the stove, I also made it myself. He did not learn this anywhere. Life forced him to. For this stove, Niaz Mahmat used a piece of a pipe. Inside is a brick, around discs from an Ural motorcycle and a spiral. In order to control the pressure, he built a voltmeter. But this is not all. On the roof of his house, where his wife is rolling the balls of the sour cheese, the local inventor set up a parabolic dish. There are other signs of progress here. Electricity. Residents of this village always have light. Even when in the winter time, in many regions of the country, there are limits on electricity consumption. By using materials at hand, we build this hydroelectric power station. It has a capacity for 16 kilowatts. Another locality also has its own power station. Now there is light in every house. Cars with products come here only once a year. They bring rice, sugar and salt. 
the residents of Yagnob do not need more. It would seem that there below there are a lot of things without which a modern person cannot imagine life. Work, school, hospitals, stores. But the residents of Yagnob have no desire to live anywhere else but their mountains. A fashion show titled Central Asian Fashion was held in Kazakhstan in the city of Almaty. This is the largest specialized platform on the Central Asian market of designer clothing. It is already the 16th time that this event gathers representatives of the fashion business from all across the world. Acclaimed leading players of the industry as well as budding beginners once again got an opportunity to establish business contacts, present their ideas, attend master classes and discuss the current state of the fashion industry. Each year, the International Central Asian Fashion Show is attended by around 6,000 people. Among them are designers, buyers, distributors and owners working in the fashion business in Central Asia, CIS and Europe. Every year, the geography and list of participants are expanding. This time, the event gathered more than 200 brands out of 16 countries of the world. Among participants, there are associations of exporters and manufacturers from Italy, France, Germany, Turkey and Russia. For us designers, this is also a chance to perhaps establish collaboration with these brands. According to the tradition, the event had three main themes. Expo, this is four and a half thousand square meters of exhibition space, business, events in the B2B format and master classes, as well as the show, the catwalk and designer installations. By the way, the last to be presented were the collections of the next spring-summer season of five designers from Kazakhstan, Ukraine and Georgia. I work not only with clothes, but also shoes and bags. This is a new technology, because to make such a high face from real leather, technologically it is very difficult. The face of Venus on the bag and the hand on the shoe. These are the innovations that Salome intends to introduce to Central Asian fashion. But a designer from Amati, Olga Kim, follows the world trends. For her accessories, she uses environmentally clean materials. This is real wood, real leather, crystal and textile. It is done in a minimalist style, geometric forms, no stones or a minimum of stones and a maximum of natural materials. Leather clothing for a couple of years now tickles the minds of fashion designers all across the world. The most important here is not to be afraid to experiment. Delicate handwork on leather. Of course, here's a print, but visually it looks like it's handmade. For the beginning designers, this event is a good opportunity to showcase their work and for famous brands to find business partners and expand their presence in Central Asia. And this concerns not only foreign manufacturers. We're hoping that our collections will be chosen and sold not only in Almaty and Astana, like right now, but also in other cities of Kazakhstan, of Central Asia and Azerbaijan. Aside from the commercial aspect, the professional quorum of this event had an excellent platform for discussing the main problems of the fashion industry. The central theme of the business program was the current state of the industry at the background of new economic challenges. During the master classes, experts built up a new tactic of effective sales, offered relevant business solutions. Participants found out about methods of attracting additional consumer traffic, common mistakes of conducting campaigns, the emotional attractiveness of service. How to monetize on emotions and feelings of consumers. It is not a secret how the fashion retailers can compete with discounts, sales and beautiful store windows. The exchange of ideas and business experience gave an opportunity to analyze and determine the main trends and directions of development of the fashion retail sector in Central Asia. And this means that this exhibition accomplished its mission for at least the next six months. Already next spring, its participants will gather again to showcase their new projects and discuss pressing issues. You're watching the Central Asian Report. Until next time on Kazakh TV.